esteemed chairperson, Dr. Rosie Tepp, and the respected director of the college, Mr. Kvulo Lauren, respected principal of the college, Dr. Hewasa L. King, respected manager, support and services, Mr. Humalo Lauren, and esteemed topper, the linguistics topper. I met her for the first time today, but we had communicated a few days earlier. Uh, esteemed faculty and staff of the college, parents, guardians, and other guests who are here today, students of the college and the graduates. Congratulations, Tetsu College graduates of 24, 2024. It's your great day where you come to revel in the company of your batchmates, your juniors, your teachers, the other staff of the college. Today is indeed something that will lift your spirits, make you remember this college forever. This will also be the last time you are with most of the people here who were your family for the last three years. Thanks to the management for the invitation to be a part of your celebration. Of course, I came to this college maybe 15, 20 years back. I don't know when it was new. After that, I didn't get an opportunity. So it feels good to be here today and share some thoughts with you graduates. Truly speaking, Today, you embark on a new journey. But this is going to be a very long and difficult voyage. There will be a lot of hurdles on the way. You have accumulated a lot of knowledge throughout your academic career and here in the college. But it may not be enough what lies ahead. Some of you will pursue further studies. I know at least there's one person on this dais who will. All of you have goals, but some of you may have to deviate from your goals. It's a consequence of the times. But whatever it is, you will have to work hard, very, very hard. Now, this reminds me of the time I graduated. Those days, we did not have these graduation days. It was nothing grand like this. About seven or eight of us, graduates, fresh graduates, went and met our favorite professor. We came around this table and we say, sir, we have graduated. He looks at all of us and says, hey, congratulations. He stands up, shakes hands with everybody, sits down, and says, get out of here. Don't ever come back again. Now, we were wondering why he doesn't want, he is a teacher, he doesn't want to, us to come back as teachers. A year later, he got through the, uh, through the UPSC, he got inducted into the IPS. After two years, I came back joined my alma, alma mater as, um, as part of the faculty. He retired a very satisfied and happy policeman. I look back at my career as a teacher for the last 40 years. I don't have any regrets. In fact, I'm happy. I'm glad I became a teacher. So it's your own passion. But for your generation, things are different. 
I wanted to become a teacher, I became a teacher, he wanted to become a policeman, he became... You will have your choices, but things are different today. Now AI has come in, this is making things more difficult, jobs are being lost because of AI, you will have to innovate, you will have to reinvent yourselves. But you'll have to have two, three, four, or five more options. If I don't get this, this. Your time is such. Why I say this is because today government jobs are very scarce. Go back 40 years, the Nagaland Public Service Commission advertised teaching positions for the different government colleges. For geology, I'm a geologist. For geology, there were two posts. So I put up my application, interview day, I was looking around for any known faces, there were none. Then I found out that I was the only candidate. Two posts, one candidate. I laughed it out. They have to take me good or bad. <laughs> they took me. Come 38 years into the future, 2022, the NPSC advertised about 95 or 96 posts, EAC, DSP, and those categories of posts. For less than 100 posts, there were more than 17,000 applications. So that's why I say you have to have options, second, third, fourth, fifth options. Just because you don't get something, you give up, no. You are killing yourselves. And you're killing yourselves, this should, not, this should not happen. There are jobs everywhere in the private sector. Multinational companies are hiring. We have people from Nagaland working in almost, in almost all the states of India. We also have people from Nagaland working in many foreign countries. It's not the end here. You can also consider entrepreneurship. These days there are many young, many successful uh, entrepreneurs, Naga entrepreneurs, local entrepreneurs. You can join the list. There is scope everywhere, only you've got to search for it. It has to be in tune with your interest. And then nothing should be able to stop you. Some of you may become very successful business people. <laughs> Who knows, you might become employers, you might employ people. But, but that's in the future. It's in the future provided you start working now. You have to be serious about life. Success, <clears throat> excuse me, has always been the most important goal for the human, human race. It was always success that drives us, that has driven us. But success does not come without struggle, except for a few, for the chosen few. The rest of us have to struggle for success. Success comes to the diligent and the challenge takers. Are you a challenge taker? Are you diligent? Now this, I always refer to this example everywhere I go. About 25 years back, I was in the Nagaland House, Delhi, New Delhi, over breakfast near the door. The room was full of people, everybody was chattering the morning, usual morning gossip over breakfast. I was waiting for my breakfast. One young man comes dragging his suitcase. So he was looking around. I say, hey, good morning, come. I'm alone, you can join me. He comes, leaves his bag. I say, you order breakfast. Then I asked him, Are you, have you come to look for a room in the guest house? He said, I've checked already, there's no room. I'm leaving for Missouri this evening. He was leaving for Missouri that evening. So he wanted to rest. 
I said, okay, take it. I'm going out after breakfast. You have, you take my key. You relax in my room, have a good time. Evening, you just leave the key at the reception. I'll collect it in the evening. So I asked him, Masuri, for what? And this, he says, he's headed for the Lal Badu Shastri National Academy of Administration. So I got a shock. Are you into the IA in the IAS? Have you been inducted? He says, yes, I qualified the UPSC this year. I clapped. I was so happy. I was happier than him for him than he was. I was so happy. I said, congratulations. And I probably repeated that two or three times. Then he looks around and comes near my ears and whispers, it was my seventh attempt. I said, so what? Seventh attempt or tenth attempt, you did it. Many people have left it halfway and gone back. They couldn't do it. He was diligent. He was a challenge taker. He was disciplined. It was just one example, but it has a lot of meaning. So going through tough times is not easy. We all know it. But there is no substitute for hard work. Always remember this quote. The price of discipline is always less than the cost of regret. I repeat it. The price of discipline is always less than the cost of regret. There are many people who have gone through very severe challenges in life. life. You all have heard of Thomas Alva Edison, considered the greatest inventor of all times. His mother was a teacher, school teacher. But his mother could not take him to school because they didn't have the resources. But his mother, being a teacher, would come back and tutor him at home. He was diligent. He knew his mother's position, his family's position. He studied hard. His mother was probably very good, definitely a very good teacher. This boy who could never go to school because of financial problems became the greatest inventor of all times. It tells us a very huge story of success. This story tells, it tells us that each of us have been gifted with talents. But unfortunately, very few of us actually use these talents. Don't let that happen to you. We all come from different social and economic backgrounds. But does it really matter? In this highly competitive world, only hard work gets you through. To give an example of, from the US, the first black president of the United States of America, Barack Obama. The first black president who became the most powerful man on earth. Social and economic backgrounds did not deter him. He had the grit, he had the determination. Then Kesavino talked so much of Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela was in jail for 27 years. He was inspired by Gandhi's teachings. He managed to, being in jail for 27, the, the best part of his life, being in jail for the best part of his life, he managed to free South Africa from apartheid. That's definitely a very great man. But no matter how great you are, without determination, it's not possible. You too can, if you have the determination. And only if you are disciplined. So this means, graduates of 2024, complacency should have no place in your lives at this stage. You graduates represent the bright minds of our society today. 
But your success did not come without a price. Your family, your parents, your guardians, and there are so many people around you, including your teachers, whose blood, sweat, I mean, sweat and tears went to bring you to this stage. You should not forget it. And there are so many people like you who wanted to study, who started studying, drop, had to drop off halfway, midway. Somebody who could not even enter college. Somebody could not, could not even uh, uh, I mean, uh, sit for the matriculation examinations because of social problems, socioeconomic problems. You are the lucky ones. But why could they not? Economic problems. There's something wrong with our society. But you too may not go very far. Now why I say this? Because those at the helm of affairs in our state have taken away everything, or almost everything. So this, where does this leave you? So embarking on this new journey, you cannot afford to be cut off from the realities afflicting our society today. You have a big responsibility. You have to help rid society of the numerous injustices and imbalances that we see today. Together, all of you will have to. It's not only you, I'm not talking of Tetsu government, I mean Tetsu graduates. You and like-minded people from all the colleges, the universities, you have to make connections. So does that mean that I'm instigating you to start a revolution? No. I'm just telling you that most of the major revolutions on this, in this world in recent memory started on campuses. College and university students started some of the biggest revolutions. And one of the biggest and most dangerous revolutions was in the Tiananmen Square, Beijing. Students protesting against the Communist Party of China, the government. But why should they take on such a powerful force that must be one of the most powerful forces on earth? Corruption, freedom of speech, freedom of the press. There's so many issues. So all of you also have that responsibility. And we don't have such a terror, I mean, such a terror of a government like this Communist Party. For you, things are much easier, but we don't see it on the campuses. Though I've been talking to even my classroom my lectures, at least once a week, I devote five minutes of my talk on this, but I don't see any results. It is your responsibility. Now, uh, there are so much of discussions. There are so, much, so many movements on climate change unemployment all over the world. Now, people have gone to that level where they talk of global warming, sorry. They talk of global warming. But here today, we don't have that. We, don't, we have not yet reached that stage. We are still stuck with civic sense and cleanliness. See, this is a problem with our society. Your college is clean. But outside, it may not be clean, outside the campus. Why? Because our mentality. So can you, the educated lot, start a movement to bring in cleanliness, to bring in civic sense into our society? Yes, you can. It should start from one person, start from this campus. There's nothing that's impossible. But whatever it is, do not think that these matters do not concern you. It's everybody's responsibility, particularly the graduates of today. You also have a duty towards our planet. Our planet is dying. You can perform this duty by 
educating our people. You can educate people by, I mean, you can educate our people by making awareness on sustainability, sustainable, sustainable use of our meager resources. Whatever resources we have are getting smaller and smaller. We have very less. You can also teach them to consider ecological restoration. We are losing all our ecological uh, bio and, and ecology and biodiversity for simple reasons that's there for everybody to see. We have to conserve our biodiversity. We have to protect our wildlife. And if it's not the educated youth, who? But my parting shot is also you have to teach our society to reduce our consumption. We want more than what we actually need. We want more and more. Why should that happen? There are many places where people don't have enough. Teach society to recycle. We throw all our garbage, all the plastic bottles reach Doyang. Somebody had to work over time to clean up Doyang. Now all the plastic bottles, there's money for all those plastic bottles. There are people who buy these plastic bottles to recycle them. Teach our people to recycle. The educated lot, if the educated lot don't come forward, nobody else will. And then we have to care and share whatever we have. There are times when some village is devastated by landslides. Some highway is blocked because of landslides. People are cut off from the mainstream. They don't have enough food. And we have so many of these, even in the small, tiny state of Nagaland. And in this long, I mean, this brief journey on Earth, we share with some mute partners, the animals and birds. There's still so much of cruelty around. Make it your mission to ensure that there is no cruelty. These are our partners in this brief voyage through this world. The animals and birds should not suffer because of us. The day we start caring and sharing, the day we stop cruelty, that day we will truly become human. With this, I conclude. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And best wishes, Tesla College graduates of 2024. Thank you very much.